What's going on Freight Skills? Now this is actually the second iteration of this video because I just recorded this whole thing and didn't click record. So you are getting version 2.0 of this video where we are talking about cold calls. Everything that you need to know about cold calls from scripts, from what to say on the phone, how to say it, your mentality that you need when you go into cold calls, all that stuff we're going to cover in this video and you're going to get a better version than the first one that I didn't click the record button. All right, so I'm coming at you live in my light blue shirt. This sort of matches the colors of my logo, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, before we get into this, make sure you do the usual like, subscribe, and comment on this video. Uh, if it has helped you in any way, if Freight Skills has benefited your brokerage at all, it means a lot to me when you interact with this video. I love answering your questions. And the engagement also helps the algorithm so that other people can find this video and it can help them too. So let's get right into cold calls, a really hot topic. It's a really common question that I get, right? So I'm gonna structure this in a way where first we have a broad overview. What are cold calls? How do they differ in freight brokering than other industries? Number two, what do we say on the phone? Do we use a script? Do scripts work? How do you keep your prospects engaged and how do you get through to them so that they actually start giving you freight? We're gonna cover that. Mentality. What mentality do you need to have when you're making these calls to people? How should you think about rejection? How do you need to sound on the phone? All of that stuff we're gonna cover in order in this video so that you can get on the phone in the next five minutes, hour, day, month, week, whatever it is, and you can have more success with your cold calls. Now, a cold call, in case you didn't know, is the act of a salesperson or you, a freight broker, calling a shipper or a prospect that has no idea who you are, no idea what you're selling, and no idea what you are about, and you ask them to give you business. It's a really simple concept. It's been around for a very long time. So I want to address the first question that's probably on your mind, which is, do cold calls work? Should you be making cold calls? And my answer is a resounding yes. Cold calls are the number one way to get business, especially as a startup freight broker. Uh, there are a lot of other advanced strategies, of course. Uh, I teach something called the warm call method uh, that eliminates some of the chill of a cold call, but in general, making cold calls is going to help you move your business forward. All right, we're gonna talk about how to make them a little less intimidating as we get on with this video. Now, cold calls, while they're simple in nature, right, you just pick up the phone and you ask questions. If you think about it like that, it's really easy to make a cold call. But what makes cold calls a little bit different in freight is two things. Number one, instead of selling a product or a service that people typically don't really need, you're calling shippers who have a burning need for your product or your service. Because in a way, you're actually selling something that they can't go a day without, and that is moving their freight. But that leads us into what makes this a little bit more difficult, which is there are a lot of people that move freight. There are a lot of people that do the same thing that you are trying to do. Making cold calls as a freight broker is kind of a double-edged sword, right? So you're not a spammy, scammy salesman because you're selling something that people need. The businesses that you're calling need this service but it's very difficult to do because there are thousands of other brokers doing the same thing. But since you are watching this video, you are going to be 10 steps ahead of anybody else who hasn't seen it. Let's get right into how to succeed on these phone calls, how to stand out from anybody else, and what should you actually be saying on these calls? So now, the first thing that we need to address before we talk about scripts and what to say is your mentality. How do you go into these calls and how do you sound on the phone? Now, number one, you need to sound confident when you're calling these shippers. I don't care if you've never moved a load in your life. I don't care if you don't even know what a truck looks like. I don't care if you know the difference between drayage, intermodal, dry vans, LTLs, reefer. I don't care if you know any of that. You need to sound like you do. You need to project the confidence, and that starts with how your voice sounds. Right? If I could tell you anything to take away from this video, it's how to sound on the phone, because it doesn't matter what you say. 
it matters how you say it, right? There are plenty of studies out there that show that 90% of the things that we say matter just because of how we say it, right? People listen to it and feel it. So it's important for you to master that first. And the best thing I could tell you to master sounding confident on the phone when somebody can't hear you and see your eyeballs and touch you is to project your voice strong. And the way you do that, it's really easy, uh, I'm doing it right now, is by speaking from your diaphragm, right? I mean, there's plenty of exercises you can Google, like how to sound powerful, but the, the best thing that I can say to do is, before you start talking on the phone, talk a little bit by yourself, put your hand on your chest, and try to listen and feel for the vibration that comes when you speak powerfully through your diaphragm. This makes an instant change in the way that you sound. I'm doing it right now because I need to show you that I'm confident about the content that I'm giving you. I'm confident about the words that I'm saying. I believe every single word that I'm saying. I could have never made a cold call before and you would never know because I sound confident, right? And of course you could see me, you could see my eyes, you could see I'm not reading off a script. There's nothing here, right? All of this is coming from up here and in here. So you need to develop that, uh, whether you're faking it or not, or you're not used to it, uh, after a few times doing it, and when, once you become conscious of it, you'll be able to realize the difference of speaking from your diaphragm and speaking like almost in a timid way, right? You don't want your voice choking up and feeling like you have like a weight in your throat. It's like, hey, I wanna help you move your loads. You don't want that because that's not gonna help you get any loads from these shippers. Right? They want to give their freight to somebody who, that they, who they trust. And the best way to earn somebody's trust is to show them that they can be confident in your service. Now, as far as mentality goes, this one is tricky because we all know that even though rejection absolutely sucks, it's something that we need to learn to love. We need to embrace it because we're going to get rejected in life more than we're going to get approval. And now, we get rejection all the time. We just, it doesn't hurt us as much because we're sort of numb to it in some aspects of our life. So we have to learn how to take that numbness and translate it into positivity while we're making phone calls. So something that I always tell reps and I always tell my students before they get on the phone, they should make a goal to reach a certain level of rejections by the end of the day. And you might say, Lewis, that doesn't make sense. I want to make sales. I want." X amount of loads at the end of the day. That's great. But if you aim for rejection rather than success, not only are you reframing the idea of rejection being a good thing rather than bad thing, but success and the amount of loads that you get will be a byproduct of the rejections. So for example, if I'm aiming to get 50 rejections by the end of the day, how many calls do I have to make to get 50 rejections? I'm obviously not going to call and just completely bomb and, and blow off the transportation manager, right? I'm not gonna go away from my script and sound uneducated. I'm not gonna do that on purpose. But if I'm aiming for rejections, the only way I can achieve that is with volume. And since volume makes us better at this skill, by trying to get that volume through rejection, you're gonna have no choice but to get better. It's a little bit of a twisted concept. Uh, it's really, I mean, it's an advanced switch and it's really difficult to do, but, Take my word for it, please trust me. If you aim for rejections rather than fear it and you welcome it into your life when you're making your cold calls, you will see a lot more success, you'll see success faster, and it will result in you growing your brokerage at a faster rate. So now that we know how to say things, let's talk about what to say. Do scripts work? Should you use scripts? What's the best script? All of that stuff. And now, I'll tell you, I love scripts myself. I make them, I write them, I give them out as resources. Scripts are a really incredible tool, but you have to have in mind what is the purpose of a script. A script is not meant to be followed verbatim and word for word. Those are for the car warranty companies that call you 100 times every single day, the robocallers. They use scripts. Freight brokers should not be using a script every single time. The purpose of a script is to act as a template so that you can develop your own style with your own personality. You have to learn how to flow with a conversation. 
And a script is a great way to get an introduction to that because a script gives you a structure. It gives you an intro, a body, and a conclusion, and a goal. At the end of the day, in the long run, in order for you to get good at this, you really have to develop your own style. Now, I'm not saying that there is a magic script. There really isn't. So rather than wasting your time looking for a script, try to write your own down. Like, come up with a few ideas of yourself, an intro, a body, and a conclusion. That's all you need. Hey, my name is Lewis from So-and-So Logistics. I wanted to speak to the person who's handling the freight and see if I could be a backup option for extra capacity. Thanks. Do I have your email uh, on file so that I can follow up with you next week? It could be as easy as that, right? So don't overcomplicate scripts. Don't think that you need this magic script in order to succeed. Scripts are a really great tool, but eventually you're going to have to develop your own method and move away from scripts in order to feel and sound more confident on the phone. All right, so scripts are not a bad thing. If you have one, great. If you like them, amazing. If they help you feel more comfortable, that's awesome. Keep using them, but know that you have the ability and the brain power and the confidence to develop your own and really get good at cold calling. So we're moving really great. We're moving along here. We know that cold calls work. We know we should be making them. We know the attitude that we have to get into on our cold calls, right? We have to welcome rejection. We know that scripts work. We know that we could develop our own. So now let's talk about the concepts behind a cold call. Like how do you have to act on the phone? And to do that, I'm gonna give you the three keys to a successful cold call. These principles are what help our brokerage move millions and millions of dollars in freight revenue every single year. It's how we get new customers. Uh, it's a very simple formula, okay? So point number one is that you need to do your research before a cold call. You should know two things at a minimum. The person who you're trying to reach, what the company moves. You should know at least that because that's gonna let you show them that you're not just a regular broker, right? You did your research. Every cold call that you make needs to have a purpose behind it. You can't just pick up the phone and smile and dial. Maybe you could do that back in the 90s, but this is 2022. You have to do some research. There are plenty of resources for you to find names of people that work at companies. LinkedIn, Zoom Info, just regular plain old Google. There are so many places that you can look. You should not be calling and saying, can I speak to the person who handles shipping? Can I speak to the transportation manager? Because you can just very easily Google transportation director P&G, whatever company that you're calling, and you'll probably get an answer. Even if it's the wrong answer, at least it is something. So do your research before your calls, know the name of the person or a person that you can speak to, and know what they're moving. Know a little bit about the company. Uh, if you're just making a list and just making phone calls, you're not gonna get anywhere. That's just the fact. Point number two is you have to be brief on these phone calls. Shipping managers are extremely, extremely busy. There's a million things going on. They don't want you calling them and giving them a breakdown, asking questions about their business. They really don't care. I have a salesperson, they push a tremendous volume of freight. They do very, very well. And their sales pitch is literally, get the person on the phone and they say, hey, this is so-and-so from X Logistics. I wanted to see if I could be an option for you to help move some of your freight. And I don't know why it works for that person, but it does. And they get new customers all the time. They develop great relationships with their customers. And it just goes to show that you don't need to ask all of these complicated questions. Because let me tell you what happens. When you say, what are you currently struggling with in your freight? Their eyes roll, which is like number one physiological sign of just disgust. It's disgust. When people roll their eyes, you're expressing a disdain for the person that you're either speaking to or referring to. Oh, I mean, we could go on about that. <laughs> but when you get the eye roll, just hang it up. And when you ask, what are you currently struggling with with your logistics? I'll tell you what they're struggling with. Trucks don't answer the phone. Brokers don't answer the phone. Brokers aren't transparent. I don't know where my trucks are. I have freight sitting on the dock from last week, last month, last year. 
Uh, I can't find the prices that I used to find in 2019. My boss is breathing down my neck because I can't save money on freight anymore. I'm waiting for eight RFPs that I sent, sent out last week. I could keep going down the list. I already know what they're struggling with. So rather than asking them that and having them rehash all of those reasons, give them a reason to want to use you. Be brief, be confident, be considerate of all of their time. Just tell them, hey, I have a lot of capacity in the Southeast. I know you're based out of there. I wanna see if I could give you some options. Hey, a lot of capacity opened up for me in the last month or so with the driver shortage coming better. Um, I wanna see if I can bid on some of the rates that you have on file to see if I could be a suitable backup option for you. Both of those lines, rewind them, play them back. That's as complicated as you need to get on your cold calls. And again, I might make that sound really easy. I just came up with those off the top of my head. The reason I can is because I've been doing this for such a long time. And as you do this, you're gonna be able to do that too. And this is a perfect segue into point number three, which is don't beg. You never wanna be begging on a cold call. It's the absolute worst thing that you can do. We are sensitive to begging, right? Who begs us? Pets. Pets beg us for treats and for food, right? They beg us for attention. Kids, they beg, I don't have any kids, but if you have a kid, when they call you on the phone and they need something, I bet you know within three milliseconds that they're about to ask you for something. So you know, you have this instinct of when somebody is begging for something. And if you come across that way on the phone, the same way that you feel when somebody's asking you for something is the same way that they're gonna feel. So here's how we combat that. Rather than begging for freight, rather than sounding desperate, like I need this load to pay my bill next month, which could be true. You're not gonna show it though. So when we call, we go immediately and we say, we'd like to be a backup option for your freight. Because what happens when you do that is a little switch flips in their mind and they say, wait a minute, hold on. Whoa, slow down. This broker didn't ask me for all my loads. They asked to be a backup option. That means I don't even need to talk to them anymore. I could get them off the phone and get on with my day and they'll be a backup option if something goes wrong. Amazing, here's my email, shoot me an email. So the, the line, if you want it, it sounds like this. Hey, I know you're busy, uh, I just wanted to see if I can call you and see if I could be a backup option for some of your overflow free. Done, that's it. They're, they're usually gonna say, they'll say no. Uh, no, that's okay, I'm straight, no problem, move on to the next one. They might say, yeah, sure, I've been having some trouble covering loads in the southeast. Okay, hey, let me shoot you an email real quick with some info. I'll follow up with you next week. Done. Get that shipping manager off the phone as fast as you possibly can. The goal of the first call is not to build this deep, deep connection. The goal of the first call is just to get an email address from the person that you're talking to or some other way to connect with them outside of the phone, right? Email is the best. Uh, I mean, you can do LinkedIn, email, another phone number, another person to speak to, whatever it is, right? You just want another avenue to get and infiltrate into this company's supply chain so that you can start to prove your value to them. So now that is the best mini lesson on cold calls I could possibly give you. We covered everything from do cold calls work, how to sound confident on the phone, the mentality that you need to have before you make these cold calls, right? We're gonna start to learn to love rejection. We're going to wake up in the morning and say, I wanna get rejected 25 times today on my cold calls because that means that I made 75 calls and I failed, but I also succeeded and I got better at it and I got more open to the fact that not everybody is going to like me and not everybody's gonna say yes. There's a saying that I love, some will, some won't, so what? You have to carry that with you into your calls. We talked about what to say on the phone a little bit. We talked about the theory behind scripts. Should you develop your own? How do you develop your own? And we talked about the three key principles to help you succeed when you make these cold calls. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got anything out of this, I want you to comment below your number one takeaway from this video. And the reason I want you to comment is not just to help the algorithm, right? It's great if you leave comments, I get a nice score with the YouTubes, but it helps reinforce an idea in your mind too, right? Because if you, if you pick one nugget out of this and you apply it for the next three weeks, I guarantee that you'll see a change in the way that your cold calls are made and the results that you're getting from the calls. 
right? So just pick one thing, one thing that was the most valuable to you and comment it down below because that is going to cement into your brain. You're going to sleep on it for the next day and when you jump on the phone, you're going to remember it because you left that comment. If there are three things, leave three comments. Just tell me what you pulled out of this video, right? Because I dropped a lot on you and thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end. And now before we sign off for good, I want to personally invite you to join my free group. It's called the Freight Broker Network. The link is down below. It's a Facebook group and all it is is it's a group that I hang out in and I answer questions about freight brokering all day. Rakes, shippers, carriers, cold calls, anything you could possibly think of. I'm in there, my friends are in there, and I'd love to have you too. So just click the link below. Uh, there'll be directions on the page on how to join it. Invite yourself in and I'll approve personally, and then just invite your, uh, introduce yourself on the wall. And I look forward to helping you a little bit more on your broker journey. Until the next video, I'll see you soon.